passed already. While I was in that encounter, in the theater, when they gave me that injection, I literally died. I saw myself came out of my body and stood close to the bed. Then you came into the theater. It was this particular dress that you were wearing when you came in. And then you called me Fachilin. I was surprised that you know that name because it's my nickname. And then I said, Daddy, you know Fachilin? You said, yes, I know Fachilin. And even God knows Fachilin. When you said that, you now said, look at me. I looked at you. You said, say this with me. You now said I should repeat the words you were saying. I will not give in. I say I will not give in. I will not give out. I will not give out. I will not give up. I will not give up. I will not give, I will not give way. I will not give way. Then you said I should say between me and the devil. I said between me and the devil. You say say it is me that will tire the devil. The devil will not tire me. And then I said that. When I said that, you now said okay get back into your body and see me in church on sunday now daddy this encounter happened on wednesday of the surgery the surgery was successful on wednesday and then on thursday i was fine they gave me water and lifting i was okay by friday my whole body changed they told my mom that my organs were failing they had to go and do another scan they said my kidneys were bad i was on oxygen took three pounds of blood and so many i was on oxygen from friday till saturday evening she said i became unconscious my eyes was open and then when they call my name i will respond if they ask me something i will answer but i don't remember any of those incidents now on sunday morning from saturday till sunday morning she said i just got up from the bed Remove the oxygen and told her that senior pastor just passed and that first service is starting. I needed to be in church. Eh? She said on that Sunday, Saturday night, she said, Mommy, I want to go to church. Senior pastor has passed. See, uh, first service is still starting. I want to go. To, I said, You want to go to church? Do you know where you are? Uh huh. Where I am. Is it not church? I want to go. I want to go and make fire. I said, It's not yet. I said, I want to go and make fire. I want wow. to go to church. And then after everything on the 29th of uh, commanding the day july prayer after i was very angry that i could not come for the ignite conference so i connected in the evening the evening section and then during the commanding the day prayer you said we should place our hand on our chest that god was answering the closest need of our hearts if it was on a normal day i would have asked for money <laughs> But at that point, I placed my hand where, we did, where the surgery was. And I said, God, the pain I was feeling was too much. Daddy, that night, five minutes after commanding the day prayers, I was not sleeping. You came into my room, sat close to my bed, and you said, lie down. I lie down. You said I should turn right. When I turned right, it was like a squeezed towel, and water came out of my right side. You said, turn left. I did the same thing, and the same thing happened. I said, I wanted to say, ah, daddy, I haven't been able to sleep. You said, shh, don't say anything. Just lie down. And then I lie down. For the first time, after 13 days of surgery, I was able to sleep for at least two hours. On Tuesday, as if it was not enough, you came back again and did the While same thing. While you were sleeping. I was not sleeping, sir. I was very awake. You came in with my two eyes. You sat close to my bed on the stool I used to sew. And then you said, right, lie down again. Turn left. I turned. And then the water came out. Stop, stop, stop. Like the very last drop on the left side and on the right side. Then you said, stand up. The energy at which I stood up. Normally, two people will have to help me to sit, to stand, to bathe. My mom was bathing me for two weeks. But daddy, it doesn't look like I did surgery. Everything has healed. I can bench. I can come. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I need. That God will save on me like this. I don't know who am I. That God will do me like this. I've been having many health challenges just because I decided to go to school. They told me I will not graduate. It is over. I graduated last month and they wanted to kill me. You cannot die. But the mantle of the commission said no. Somebody give the Lord a praise. this is frightening this is frightening this is frightening 
the Lord decided to visit her physically using the face of his servant. This is frightening. This is frightening. This is frightening. The things that she said, how many of you have heard it before? Say after me, I will not give up. I will not give up. I will not give in. I will not give in. I will not give out. I will not give out. I will not give way. I will not give way. Say between me and the devil. Between me and the devil. I am the one that will tire the devil. The devil can't tire me. The devil can't tire me. That's my unconscious state. And it, when the doctor came and told her that my organs were failing, I wasn't aware of what was going on. But you will just pass the way you used to pass the message and tap one of the ministers. You will just pass the hospital and say, Don't give up, don't give out, don't give in. Those words were constantly in my spirit. And when people started to come to visit me in the hospital, if you come and tell me sorry, I will say, don't tell me sorry. Everything is settled. What I want to hear now is congratulations. And I want to thank God because I know that from this very moment, anything health challenge is over. It's over. Lift your hands. I was the one that testified here that I conversed in school and they had to break into the ceiling to bring, take me to the hospital crossover of this year i testified here i convulsed and died in my room every time i don't know i don't know it is over oh, God, go God. out of her you tormenting spirit of death every altar of premature death wherever you came from and you are looking for her all the time break now be free be free be free be free in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Father, give us a testimony. Thank you because it is done already. The last time you experience that devil is the last forever. Go and fulfill your days. Leave in Jesus' name. Mother, congratulations. You will not bury any child. It is hand that they used to wash leg. Leg does not wash hand. You know the meaning of that proverb? When it is time to go, the one who came first will go first. So children, when you have become very old, your children will bury you when you go. You will not bury children. Leg, wash hand. Hand does not wash leg. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Take your seat. It is only a foolish man that said there is no God. Indeed, this particular testimony is really touching. If actually you watch the video from the beginning of the testimony to the end of the testimony, you would know that yes, God does exist and miracles does happen. Omo, oh, this testimony is beyond, you know, ah, Omo. Oh, Glory be to God for the life and the sparing for sparing the life of this young lady. You know, because God knows that yes, if I could spare this child's life. She will come and testify of the good thing which I have done to her, which she actually did. She came and still, you know, testify. For some of you that might be asking which church is this, this is Dunamis Church. Yeah, this is Dunamis, the popularly known Dunamis in Lagos State that you've been hearing about. This is Pastor, Pastor in Dunamis. Yes, as she said, that, you know, the doctor said that her organs are failing, that her, her kidneys are damaged, this and that, they had to run another test. She couldn't even open her eye, but if they call her name, she will answer after the surgery. So, but they call her name, she answer. Even after one week, she couldn't even get herself. She was breathing with oxygen. You know, when somebody's breathing with oxygen, when they say that some parts of your organs are no longer functioning well, suddenly a pastor in her, in her church, which is this particular pastor you saw preaching and praising God and saying you devil with tire. Do you get it? So this pastor passed. Meanwhile, this is someone that has been very unconscious, and she woke up and said, Mommy, Pastor just passed. Pastor, eh? Pastor just passed. That mommy, he wants to go to church. Oh, my goodness. Who said there is no miracle? Who said there is no God? God is still doing miracle. I don't know the condition of you, you in the, the condition you find yourself today. I don't know what you are passing through today. But I want you to believe that all miracles are not fake. Yes. You know, I know that the kind of miracles we are seeing on televisions, you know, especially in Nigerian ministries and churches, have made some people, you know, to slump and slump back, you know. They withdraw. Their interest is no longer there as acting as, as it was in terms of Christianity. But I want, to, I want to affirm you now that Christianity is real. I want to affirm you that 
Christ is real. I still want to affirm you that miracle does happen in the Christ name, in Jesus name. It does happen while using God's name. So God is still doing miracle. He's still doing, performing and doing all kinds of miracle unexpectedly when you don't even expect it. This girl is an example. If you've not experienced miracle in your life before, I myself have experienced miracle. Your life is a product of miracle. You are not just alive today for the sake of your, you know, for how righteous or how beautiful or the most intelligent or the amount of money you have. People that have those things are also die. That the most even intelligent people have also died. Beautiful people also die. People that has excessive numerous money. So don't think that it's don't think that it is because of your perfection or because of your tithe or because of you know how righteous you are or because of what you are giving out to people or charity that makes God keeps you alive. No, it is just by God's grace. Only by his grace can we still be alive. Only his grace sustains us. Only his grace keeps us alive today. Could you imagine that someone you might have breathed yesterday, today, the person is normal. You might breathe someone today. It's even this minute that I'm talking, this minute that you're watching this particular video. In the next minute, the person will be there no more. You will hear that the person is dead. That is life for you. Unexpected things, both good and bad, you know, occurs. At, you know, always. But the ability and the strength, you know, to, to, to constantly be alive, keep pushing life, keep, you know, seeking for God intervention in our life. It's just by God's grace. So I'm very happy for these very young girls. Testimony, this testimony is really... Oh, it is really wow. May God alone receive all the praises. May God alone receive all the thanks. All the adoration be ascribed unto God's name and to his name alone for this wonderful testimony that you and I just listened and watched to. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel at Christy TV. Turn on the notification button so that you get notified of all latest Ninja updates. Remember in Christy TV, there is no form of fake news. All the news you are going to get in Christy TV is nothing but good and fact news. I love you guys. Ciao, ciao.